Hi, good evening everyone. It's uh, that time of uh, the week and that time of um, our history of South Africa. Um, as I said uh, tonight, um, I'm not interrogating someone. I'm having a chat with uh, uh, a very good guy. Um, he's a son of the soil of uh, the Western Cape and of South Africa with uh, Lester Kivit. We're having a discussion and interaction where I will ultimately tell you guys also who am I going to vote for. Um, you know, people are normally very secretive. Lester told me that, uh, by the way, welcome uh, to Rod's Thanks Views so Live, uh, 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 Lester. Lester told me that he went to go and vote today and there is, uh, uh, it's proof that he went to go and vote. Let's see if we can get out of his mouth <laughs> who he voted for, or maybe he'll give us some indication of the direction that he, that he went for. Uh, so, yeah, as you see, the issue is who deserves your ex? It's not who you're going to vote for. Who deserves to get that ex that you are going to put on uh, still tomorrow, uh, special votes? And on Wednesday, when all of us go and vote. So, um, Lester and myself are going to have an interaction. You know, Lester normally sits on the other side of the table where he um, uh, um, asks people questions. He maybe push them in a the corner. So now and then, I think back in the day, I had a few interactions with Lester um, where I sat on this side of the table. Um, so it's not an interrogation. I'm not going to ask you what's the price of uh, potatoes or or sugar or something like that. Um, it's just to discuss um, um, and as we lead up towards uh, um, um, who I think, uh, who I know I'm going to vote for. Uh, Lester, uh, can you tell us? How was your how did how was your voting today, uh, Ron? First, thanks so much for for having me. I, I really appreciate this platform that you have, and over the course of the last few weeks, I've I've really been enjoying your interaction with the political players over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, it's given me insight into um, political parties and political characters mm -hmm. that haven't mm -hmm. necessarily been on my radar uh, as, a, as a voter from a voter's mm -hmm. choice. So usually I'm sitting on the side of a microphone where I am trying mm -hmm. to not interrogate, but trying to, to eke out some sort mm -hmm. of pattern and thought to help other people make up their minds. I really appreciate what you've been doing over the last few weeks. It's been very enlightening. My um, my voting day, I voted today, I've cast a special vote because um, generally voting day is an incredibly busy day for, for journalists. My wife is also a journalist, so both of us will be uh, working. Uh, I'll be broadcasting from the results operation uh, center. She'll be out in the field. Um, so we've both voted today um, and I'll, I'll I'll start off by just talking about um, 30 years ago 30 years ago it was 1994 I'm, I'm still but a, a young bud mm -hmm. uh, and Did you vote 1994 yeah I was 10 years old in so 1994 was <laughs> 10 years old in 1994 <laughs> okay. and my my parents still live across the road from the retreats of Exenter mm -hmm. and I'll just 
reflect on on what the 27th of April 1994 mm-hmm. means for me. So the 27th of April was also my sister's birthday. She was four years old at the time. So excellent example for people to come over and family. But because we lived right across the way from the Retreat Civic Centre, also in 1994, we didn't have voting districts, so people mm-hmm. could vote anywhere, essentially for the national and, and provincial ballot. Um, and based on the history of my family, voted ANC, there were plenty of ANC banners outside us, so our home became um, this lamp to mosquitoes. Okay. Whoever was around the retreat civic center somehow gravitated to our home. And I, and I remember a moment, there were um, two women, and it was late in the evening, and these two women were domestic workers somewhere in the deep south. It could have been Hout Bay, it could have been Constantia. And maybe they were drawn uh, by the flags that they had seen outside our home. Uh, they, in fact, lived in Crossroads. And I remember these two women that we didn't know from Adam came in there in the later hours of voting. Um, they stayed there till very late because there were a couple of glasses of champagne. And I remember my, uh, my father and my uncle then taking them home to Crossroads, if you can recall as well. It was still a tumultuous time of, uh, of, of fear and uncertainty of what could happen in and around a voting day. But I remember my dad coming home and saying, Nia la party da, in Crossroads. So I just reflect on the activities that happened in and around my family home, these people who we did not know from Adam, um, this, uh, the celebration of 1994 at home at the time. And, and that is sort of in honor of, of, of how I vote. I tried to vote, I voted with my wife um, last time, voted with my kid into, and I remember my dad waiting for me the first time that I could vote. It was a local government election. It may have been 20, 2000 and, 2001. 2001, 2002 was a local government le- election. I worked at a, at, a, at a retail store and I was working quite late and my dad waited for me at Retreat Civic Center so he could take me to vote for the very first time. And that is a tradition that I still want to continue okay. with my friends, both my right. family and my, and my child. But, but I, I was very excited to vote. Who I voted for, uh, I, I believe that you, um, you vote rationally and you vote irrationally. And I think I did that today by splitting my vote three ways mm. across a provincial, regional, and national ballot paper. And we can talk about some of the, maybe the thought processes of, okay. of how I went through that. Okay. So, so Lisa, I, I, I want to share with you and uh, listeners, especially those who, um, don't, who are clear that they're not going to vote uh, or not wanting to vote for all kinds of reasons, so I want to share some quotes quickly of some some giants in the world. Let me let me um, read some of it. This is what Plato said. One of the penalties for refusing to part- participate in politics is that you are, end up being governed by your inferiors. Socrates said. Socrates said, the wise who refuse to rule should prepare to suffer the rule of idiots. George Orwell said, the man of Animal Farm, people who elect corrupt corrupt politicians, imposters, thieves and traitors are not victims but accomplices. Reverend Raphael Warnock says, a vote is a kind of prayer about the kind of world you want to live in. Keith Ellison said, Not voting is not a protest. It is a surrender. Then George Carlin said, one one can obviously uh, debate that, he says, if you don't vote, you lose the right to complain. Plato said, bad governments are elected by good citizens who don't vote. And then Martin Luther King said, one of my heroes, Vote like your rights depend on it, as your vote is your voice. John F. Kennedy said, The ignorance of one voter in a democracy impairs the security of all. 
Abraham Lincoln said, The ballot is stronger than the bullet. And Malcolm X, one of my other heroes, says, Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So people, that is some food for thought for some of you who are going to consider who are still uh, vacillating whether you must go and vote tomorrow or on Wednesday. So, so, so Lester, um, you know, I want to get on some initial reflections. You know, the, um, um, you, you want to say something can, about can, that? Can we just ref reflect? And, and, and of course, I, I, I don't argue with the supremacy of the principle of universal franchise and one person, one, void, uh, mm -hmm. one vote to be their, their voice. Um, but I also want to concentrate and talk about of how democratic participation goes beyond mm. just voting. Mm. In fact, not voting could actually be a participation in democracy if you do other things as well. For example, if I go back to 1994, the U mm. new um, unity movement mm. actively boycotted the 1994 general Elections, elections because they found that the negotiated process was not beneficial to the majority of South Africans and actively boycotted mm. that elections. Mm -hmm. Were were they being stubborn? Were they being non-participatory? Were they handing over the keys to the country to people who were inferior to them? No, I don't necessarily think so because the leaders of the New Unity Movement still participated in mm -hmm. other forms of mm -hmm. democracy, whether it be protest, whether it be civic participation. It's something that bothers a lot of people, but I would argue that forms of protest, even forms of protest that disrupt the lives of others, to get an elite to listen is also a form mm -hmm. of democratic participation. So yes, I believe in the supremacy of one person, one vote, but I don't think we can necessarily simply just discount that if you don't vote, mm -hmm. or if you do vote, that is your job done. How many people who, who, who have voted, who <coughs> participate every five years and in a local government election, but haven't participated in a budgetary just, process of the city of Cape silent, Town, yeah. who have not bothered to be governing body members, mm -hmm of their children's school, because I'm not interested. So, so, so my argument is that yes, encourage wholeheartedly to go vote, but I don't believe that's the beginning and the, and end, the end of democratic participation. Yeah. No, well, point taken. So, you know, we've had, how long have we been busy with this electing Far process? too long. I, I think um, we had, for example, an MK party Three. that was founded on the 16th of, of December, December. Uh, 2023. But then you've already had political parties who've been directly and indirectly participating and campaigning from September, September August yeah. last year. So it's been an incredibly long period. It's, it's long. And, and, and uh, considering that in the UK they're going to vote in six weeks' time, Six weeks is all they have. Yeah. Look, South Africa isn't the longest. It's like the United States literally uh, have two-year election yeah. cycles. So, uh, so you get into office and you immediately mm. start campaigning for the next election. Yeah. But the UK, you call it an election, you literally have six weeks to campaign. Mm. And on the 4th of July, this was an election mm. that was called last Wednesday. On the 4th of July, mm -hmm. they will go and elect... I wonder, I, I wonder whether we shouldn't uh, follow the British. <laughs> <laughs> we would save so much money and so on, eh? but then you guys won't be so busy. Look, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's been incredibly engaging, um, not only dealing with political parties and the characters that are involved, but it is also the opportunity uh, to more than usual. Look, I work for a talk radio station and our, our, our job is to garner uh, public participation through conversation, but it's been absolutely fascinating watching town hall debates. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite type of debates, but I appreciate it gives people a platform to speak directly to politicians. And I've been enjoying engaging with our listeners on just what are some of the issues that are affecting this election 2024, the most important election since 1994. Your thoughts on the slogan by Ryzen Zanzi, 
2024 is our 1994. Is our 1994. I, I, you know, I, uh, Julius also used, uh, used that malema. As a person who voted in 1994 and a person that's voting now in 2024 and knowing what we went through to get to 1994 and knowing what we've gone through to get to 2024 and um, what we've lost and what we've squandered along the way, um, there is no way that 2020, 2024 can be our 1994. You can talk to your father, hopefully, hopefully he's still alive, uh, you can talk to any other people and so on. The two can't equate. I was ecstatic when, um, on 1994. Uh, as you told, you related the story about the lady in Crossroads, that your dad then went to Crossroads. People had parties there and so on. We're not going to have that kind of situation in 2024. People were black, white, pink, yellow, and all of that stuff. We, all together, we had fun and all of that stuff. I was, um, um, I think I was a party agent for the ANC. Uh, I was part of the Kensington branch on the, on the executive. I'll never forget, I voted at the... Maitland Town Hall, I still went to go and vote late in the afternoon because we had to go and pick up people in your cars and go and take them to the voting stations and all of that stuff and so on. So, no, it's a totally different, it's a totally different but, kind of... But if, but if the ANC and Cyril Ramaphosa first announced in a State of the Nation address, which essentially then became an ANC slogan, this figure of Tinswalo. Uh -huh. This uh, imaginary 30-year-old South uh -huh. African who has benefited yeah, yeah. from an ANC regime. It's only benefit, not being uh, disaffected or negatively affected. The ANC runs, tells a good story to tell with this character of Tinswalo. But for many South Africans, it is 30 years of failed promise. And how do you rationalize, of course, the major world-shifting event? 1994 was a world-shifting yep. event to a reality in South Africa where, what's the statistic that I read um, uh, from the Center for Early Childhood Development, that 50% of children under the age of five come from households who have a monthly income of 1,045 Rand. That mm. is a crisis. Yeah. That is a world shifting experience for those young people who in 13 years time will be old enough to vote rod yeah no no listen so i i, I can the tensualo thing has blown up in his face in any and, and i one can go to town on that and i don't think i want to do that but just the point is mm -hmm. i there is just no way that zb can also mm -hmm. have gone with julius and all of that because it's not well thought through mm -hmm. Because 1994 can never be equated to 2024. Because between 1994 and 2024, there's been huge strides, but there's also been huge disappointments. Huge, huge, huge. And, and probably that's why you voted three ways. <laughs> and probably that's why people like me is also going to vote the way I'm, I'm going to vote. And others are going to vote. And others who you know they would have voted in a particular way, is they mm. not going to vote the way that we, they're going? I, I so, think so, my, so my methodology on three yeah. ways is, and like many, many people are dissatisfied uh. with the offerings of, uh. of big tent yeah. politics, yeah. but at the very same time, not happy, satisfied yeah. by the quality of alternatives. Yeah. So when I spoke earlier about making rational and mm. irrational decisions, in the very same booth, I made decisions which deal with my personal mm. relations with certain politicians. Mm. It deals with my relation to policy, 
deals with my relation to what future I want my child to grow up in also dealt with a with a theory that says that I am comfortably middle class. Mm. I want to extend privilege to those who don't enjoy it. Mm. So the in that there is rationality, also irrationality yeah. in how I have split okay. my vote three good, ways. Good. I'll, I'll, I'll talk. We'll talk a bit some more later about uh, when we talk about uh, some of the options and so on. You know. Let, let me share some of the interesting stuff that I think that I've noticed that maybe and and you interacted with some of the parties as well and you and you saw I purposefully uh, focused on having a chat with uh, some of the newer comers, uh, the so-called smaller parties who they call now the popcorn parties and uh, who they call them mercenaries as well, um, and these parties they don't really have the budget to mm. to. Um, heavy media campaigns and all of that stuff, etc. So you know, one of the interesting things that I've noticed is how less arrogant than what they were in the past. Uh, a party like the, um, like all the parties were, especially and the DA and the EFF in the beginning were very gung ho about what they were going to do and 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 the moonshot and the EFF uh, uh, talking, starting to talk about this one must be the Minister of Finance, this one must be this and all of that stuff. But as elections went on, they were less gung-ho. I mean, I, I don't know if you picked that up. And then what I also found very interesting was the smaller parties, the so-called smaller parties and the new entrants actually started going toe-to-toe -to -toe mm. with some of the bigger parties. And they um, they gave them a run for mm. their money nationally. You, you mentioned them, the MK party. The ANC initially treated them like, oh, this is not going to go anywhere. But then it, they got the ANC running scared in, 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 in nationally. Um, so they had, MK had the ANC and the EFF running scared. And here in the Western Cape, you, you know, mm. the uh, Patriotic Alliance and um, Cape Colored Congress, for example, and Al Jamaa, parties like that, starting started to get the DA running scared in the Western Cape when they, mm. when, the, uh, um, when the penny dropped that the Western Cape is not as mm. secure as they thought. What what are your thoughts about that or, or any other Look, thoughts that you had? Nationally, I, yeah. I, I've spoken to to to, to <sighs> people belonging to to Rizam Zanzi, mm -hmm. and it was an active targeting of the Democratic Alliance, which mainly got them particularly headline prominence. Whether it was mm. talking about mercenary parties, whether it was talking yeah. about popcorn parties, whether it was adverts depicting flags being mm -hmm. burnt, the Rizam Zanzi actively targeted mm -hmm. the Democratic Alliance on a national picture to say we can go up against the official opposition mm -hmm. in this country. Provincially, the Patriotic Alliance did something which hasn't been seen, and that has, in a recent by-election, broke what's called the Blue Wall mm -hmm. in, um, Malmesbury. in Malmesbury, in the Swatland. Mm -hmm. It would be unheard of for any party to take away a seat from the Democratic Alliance there. But the Patriotic Alliance did. did the Patriotic Alliance also challenged quite uh, strongly in the Cedarburg, in Clan mm. William. Uh, Cedarburg for, first forum took that war, yes. but you saw tremendous growth also in Oatswaran. Oatswaran is where you also had um, in the 2021 elections, was, was then, I forget his name, but he was the youngest mayor in South Africa. Oh, yes, yeah. ANC yeah, that youngster. mayor yeah, who yeah. then defected to the Patriotic Alliance. All of a sudden, you see the Patriotic Alliance running a very, very impressive game in the Western Cape, but in the rural yeah, Western, the Cape. Western Cape. I, the Patriotic Alliance has not been tested yet in the Cape Metro. There's something like 3.3 million registered voters in the Western Cape. Two million of them are in, this, in the Cape Metro. What 
the Patriotic Alliance has done. They've built a solid base along in the central Karoo. They have built uh, some sort of following on the West, the West Coast, Coast, Cedarburg, and mm-hmm. we can talk about opportunistic or non-opportunistic news events that mm. they may have taken advantage of. And then also Garden Root mm. um, and Mossel Bay, you've seen them mm. grow there. So they've triangulated a position, but that excludes the Cape Metro. And we're going to have to wait after Wednesday to see that if they've made any roads, mm. or whether they are a not a rural Terran party, but mm. whether they can actually bring out voters in the Cape Metro on Wednesday. And what do you think of the CCC in the Cape Metro? I I watched the interview with Fadil mm. uh, at the weekend, um, and he he intimated that, and and, he, and he's right. Campaign is 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 a very expensive job. Mm. Um, I have seen a very very strong Cape Coalition na- or NCC uh, a party that had started off quite well. But because campaigning is a very, very expensive undertaking, he admitted that they're unable to campaign. Um, I, I see a lot of traction for them on social media. Social media is no bearing, mm. is no poll. No reflection. For no yeah. reflection whatsoever. But it speaks to what happened in 2021 in local government elections where we started seeing people leave big tent organizations like the DA, like the ANC. And they try to find homes that either for people who look, who sound, who speak mm-hmm. like them, like them. Um, which is debatable whether that's good for democracy, the leaving of the center mm. and people going to either the fringe of the left and right, but it is a phenomenon that we are going to have to deal with in South Africa. I don't think any uh, political organization, particularly in the center, and I group the ANC, I group the DA, I group good BOSA, maybe even Raisam Zanzi, they're going to have a, a, a difficult time holding a center if people are looking for people who either live in communities like mm. they do, talk like them, sound like them, look like them, it's going to be a feature in our politics. Not in 2024. There's an argument that says that 2024 is essentially just a primary election for for what's going to happen in 2029 in South Africa. You know, the one thing that I found interesting is how the ANC ran this campaign. Clearly, it seems that the ANC, they must have run out of money. Um, I've seen less posters um i don't know if they're running scared or something so when we talk about posters wait uh, just hang on i just want uh, then you can come (laughs) back to the posters thing (laughs) because i want us to talk about posters Uh uh, later on is the fact that the anc walled out all of these veterans and pensioners who's been there who must now retire uh, play with their children and their grandchildren and so on. And um, all of these people who are supposed to be the stalwarts and people look up to and so on, to go and campaign. I found, and a lot of those people that they walled out mm. were people that were highly critical of the direction that the ANC has taken in in, in, in latter years. What, what do you... Make about that, but Tabu Mbeki mm. hadn't campaigned for the ANC since 2008. Isn't yeah. it some sort of coup, some victory that after uh. a number of years they can convince uh. a former president who yeah. was recalled that that shows some sign of organizational renewal? Yeah, yeah. That's a question we could ask. Another question you could ask is who's campaigning for the ANC in mm. the Western, Western Cape? Cape? You had Oscar Mabuyani. Uh, the Eastern Cape Premier, the chair of the uh, ANC, yeah. to campaign in in the Western Cape and part of of, of Kaya it, it shows that the ANC has no uh, real figure. And there's this phenomenal, and, and I have personal relationships, professional relationships with people across all parties, and I know that there are individuals who work incredibly hard. Um, but I've always thought that the ANC has always needed a character and a figurehead. So that's Western Cape politics. We are drawn very much to the characters of and Western Cape politics. After uh, 
Ibrahim Rasul was recalled in 2008. Who replaced him in terms of that figure? There was Len Brown for a time being, and then there was Marius Franzman. After Marius Franzman, who was that central Western Cape figure for the ANC? There was They're no isolated. one. They're 2011. Uh, probably the most popular trade unionist in the country at the time, Tony, Tony Ehrenreich. Ehrenreich. He yeah. ran for mayor of the city of Cape Town. Tens of thousands of Kasatu members who enjoyed the popularity of Tony Ehrenreich couldn't get him voted as mayor of the city of Cape Town yeah. in 2011. Yeah. You know, another another thing that I, that, um, Lesa, I think I'm, that's very concerning for me, I think, at this, this election, is that the president did two things that has never been done before. Is that he signed into law two pieces of legislation that's been laying on his, on his desk for months. And in, we must know he's a kick. He's a kick to touch, president, kick controversial stuff to touch. The one is a NHI and then the thing, I think, on GBV on the eve of the election. Then the other thing is that address that they had last night, I, I didn't listen to it, uh, the full thing, um, that he um, had such an address. With, it was clearly political uh, trying to 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 get uh, on on people on side for the ANC I, I found that I'm very concerned if we're going to go that route mm. because um, around uh, do, do, do you have any views on, about that or not when Joe Biden mm -hmm. on the eve of the US election the second Tuesday of November and he gives an address what do you think is expected to say as an outgoing mm -hmm. and incumbent US president you will Say it's important to go out and vote. This is the vote for the, uh, This is what we would have. This is what we have achieved, mm -hmm. and without me mentioning himself by name, we'll probably say this is what we have achieved. When Richie Sunak, on the eve of the Fourth of July, when he stands outside uh, Ten Downing Street and he will say, uh, "Please go out and vote. It's important to UK's democracy." Mm -hmm. It's he'd say something similar. I am less. I'm not that convinced. Of course, it was a stump speech. But it's never happened in South Africa before. In, in, since 1994. Has, I can't recall that. Has the president not gone on? No, no, no. On, before they, a few days before the election. That, that, that's my concern. Mm. The, the no, way, no, they, they can do yeah. that. But I'm just saying, is that a good thing? Is that something that we should, we understand that he's still the president and so on. But my issue is, it has never been done before. And are we setting a dangerous precedent? I think an incumbent will always use the benefits of office. And we uh, see it, whether it be an ANC government or whether we see it with a DA, with a DA government. Mm. Uh, all of a sudden, we have National Department of Transport advertisements being yeah, flighted yeah, yeah. on radio. And all of a sudden, you have a Western Cape mm. provincial government advertisement saying this is what we mm. are doing perfectly time and you don't mm. have to mention a political party who is in charge because it is then inferred incumbent mm. governments tend to do that the way i read it, and, and and maybe i'm being a little bit too sympathetic to the president he couched a lot of what he said in we and when i read we i meant we as a sixth administration and a sixth parliament of the republic of south africa there are 14 political parties 400 members who make up the we he spoke a lot okay, about then the speaker should have done that if he spoke on behalf of parliament <laughs> mm -hmm. we spoke about on, on behalf of an, uh, of an administration and you're right but the president then, is not a member of yeah, parliament yeah. Then, but then but I, 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 I read it as as speaking about the successes of a sixth Ad administration. He mentioned a lot of we. He mentioned a lot of, of of um, of gains that are, are budgetary aligned, like the social relief of distress grant. And you can couch that by saying, you know what, the, this isn't policy. These are money bills that need to be voted on. Mm -hmm. So whether you voted for it or not, collectively as a parliament, as an administration, we did that together. Not him. Not there him. We, says, we did it <laughs> together. But at the same time, the inference is yes. that an ANC yeah, yeah. government has. Yeah. 
Listen, you know, on, on a lighter note, you know, the, the other thing, interesting observation for me is I was so glad to see all of our people go to all of these rallies mm. and go and eat up their food, uh, the free food and the T-shirts that they're giving to our people, even the entertainment. I know there's been a big outcry on social media about the performers that performed at some of the rallies and are they now members of these parties and people want to ostracize them and so on. That's that's a debate Temple for another Boys thing. Temple go make their money at the DA rally. It's yeah, absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. Go make your so, money. So, <laughs> so I, I, I found that, uh, man, that's why one of the things mm. I said, we must have maybe elections quite more often <laughs> and our people can get food <laughs> and they can get clothing and, mm. and, and these parties will pay, will, uh, will pay mm. for that. So... Um, Let's get back. Let's talk about the posters. You wanted to talk about. I want to talk about the posters because that the most the most fascinating thing about posters is that when posters were up, uh. which political party poster was spoken about the most because it was not there? ANC. Exactly. Mm. They were clearly in a roundabout Absolute, way. Absolutely fascinating. People mm. were asking. Where are the ANC posters? So it was missing. Mm. And yes, it comes down to money. It comes down to finances. The ANC's argument was that uh, we were producing them centrally and they uh, would were producing be, them in China. <laughs> and they would be distributed nationally at the same time. Yeah. But I think it was actually uh, maybe an unintended consequence mm. that what people missed and what people spoke about was the absence mm. Of ANC posters. Uh, in terms of the quality, we can talk about that. I've spoken to some... Um, um, I want to talk about that a bit. I want, yeah, like how much does a poster cost? So, so the cheapest that, that one screen printer tells us, and, and they wouldn't declare, and I totally appreciate why they wouldn't say um, uh, how much political party poster costs, but they said anywhere between 25 rand and 75 rand. Uh, I know that. I mean, it costs the a lot of money. No, no, no. <laughs> Remember, I ran for his mayor at some stage. It costs about 50 bucks. Yep. With all of that stuff, you know. And is, it then, a, is, is it a worthwhile return on investment? Man, it's expensive. Mm. Because you've got to pay people to put it up. Mm. And then you've got to pay. Luckily, you don't pay the, the municipality for the right to put it up. For the elections, you, you, you forego that. Uh, you don't uh, incur that cost. And then you got to fit, you got to take it off mm. within, I think, 14 days after the elections. After that, you then get you get fined. fined if you, you don't. get fined, yeah. But I, I was, um, let's talk about the messaging. Yeah, yeah, um, no, that, no, that's why. Can we, can, can we do it in, in this go way? Go away, go away. Do you want to go you, look at posters? No, no, no. no uh, maybe do you want to put up the, the, the posters for the people to. Which, which posters, uh, without having to look at it, which posters did you find striking? I'll, I'll tell you which ones mm. I found striking, and then we can talk about which ones you found boring mm. or didn't get, uh, you get that. Talk, talk about the striking ones. Um, and, and give us the, an idea why you say it's a striking one. The Freedom Front Plus's election posters uh, at least had a message of pol of, of positivity. Uh, uh, Herstal and Herbo, uh, Herbo yeah. which I thought was a very clever mm. message. Um, rescue South Africa, Democratic Alliance. Right. The question is rescue from what? Yeah. Uh, and for who? And for who? Uh, the IFP has posters of Mangusutu Butelezi. Uh, the late Mangusutu Butelezi, with a campaign message of trust mm. us. Do I trust any politician? No. So that was a, a very, very far-fetched um, uh, re, uh, request. Um, Rise Mzanzi had a very catchy slogan, or has a very catchy Elect slogan. new leaders. We need new leaders. It's yeah. quite simple and to the point. Uh, Patricia DeLille said, stop the suffering. Stop the suffering again from... Who, particularly if Patricia Dill has been a member of cabinet for the last five years, Patricia Dill has also been a, a MEC for social development and a, mayor. and a mayor of the city of Cape Town. So we ask, stop the suffering again. Stop mm. the suffering from who? Um, action action say only action will fix South Africa. Um, look, what I will tell you about action is, and we and, and what you spoke about earlier of 
very lofty plans and ambitions of political parties, all political parties, have had to tone down a messaging. Remember, Herman Mashaba, very vocal, very strident when it comes to issues on migration. What happened? They had a national congress of Action SA, and the Congress decide we they need to tone bit. down mm. this messaging. I think he's an absolutely fascinating politician, Fadil Adams. Fadil has toned down his rhetoric. Julius he, never swore, he never swore <laughs> once when he was here. <laughs> <laughs> we must have heard him a lot. Julius Malema. Julius Malema. Um, wow, is, that is was a toned down, that boy. Feeling the pinch uh, of the impact of the MK party Party. in KZN and in Pumalanga, coming Uh, down to Cape Town uh, to openly canvas here to the Garden Route. He was in Mossel Bay and then he also went to Georgia. Wasn't he on your radio station? He was on our radio radio station and that's where the question around the the cost of a loaf of of bread Uh, comes from. but all of a sudden, you have Jake. Uh, you have uh, Judas Malema actively campaigning in a, in a part of the country which they they the, were the third or fourth largest party in the province, uh, but didn't necessarily yeah. need the votes here yeah. because of the strong on Pumalanga case. Okay, then. Then. Now the, they're worried, and they all of a sudden canvassing in places like Cape Town, in uh, so-called coloured areas of uh, of Johannesburg as well. So so. They've all had to tone and, down and, rhetoric. And what do you think about, I, I think the, the Bossa one was quite stra- a job in every home, but then I said, how realistic is that? You know, the thing of Bossa, they, they had a, 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 a job in every home and... Um, it, it's a rip from, uh, I think it was, was it Eisenhower? Eisenhower had a campaign slogan called a chicken in every pot. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah. And, it, and, and it is a... And, and it is a Direct translation mm. or, or yeah. a rip from, from Dwight Eisenhower's A Chicken yeah. in Every Pot. And, and you know, I, I actually, as, as you said about the Freedom Front Plus, I, they were quite uh, interesting, I think, because they, they, they like they use Choose Freedom, mm. a play on their name. and But but free for who? Um, and then, and then I, I, we I, can I, rebuild South Africa because of the link with Solidarity and Mm. and Afri Forum and all of that stuff. So, I, I, While I mm. found the Herstel and Herbo message mm. quite positive, um, the Choose Freedom slogan, I spoke to Kone Mulder about this. Go, mm. uh, freedom Front Plus, as you can also see on the... And Cape Exit. They're part of a Cape Exit. They're part of a Cape Exit movement. Yes. So, um, Kone <laughs> Mulder says, you could interpret that as... Freedom choose for the freedom okay. uh, as the freedom from plus or freedom from uh, the for the Western Cape okay, from 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 uh, and and they've pivoted quite well. It's always been part of yeah. of Freedom Front's policy um, to build off a platform of federalism. Mm. They've gone righter than <laughs> that, far yeah. right to say we're actually Cape Secession, which is a is another conversation. But something about the Freedom Front is that they're incredibly smart mm. politicians. Their growth does not start now. Their growth starts before 2019. Because when we think of semigration from northern parts of the country, Joburg, uh, we think it's some sort Clearly of- Clearly a plan. We, 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 we think it's some, some recent phenomena uh, post COVID, uh, but we already saw semigration patterns happening long before 2019. Freedom From Plus picked that up very early. So where did they see growth in the Western Cape? What, I think they have 14 seats now. They started off with four. They have 14 seats currently. They saw migration pattern change, particularly in the Southern Cape, and they started building on there. So in terms of campaign mappers, I think they're a very, very yeah. smart. Another, bunch. another great trick. You know the, the great re- trick, the reverse trick. And and then and then I found the other one I found interesting um, is is PMC Marius Fransman mm. them that says South Africa needs change now, but that messaging was overpowered. I thought by this huge image of the leader of France. So you must really look to see that that. Um, what I found interesting about 
the PMC is that there are very strong political brands in the, in the form of Marius France and also Dan Platt, Dan former Platt, Mayenne, yeah. former yeah. MEC. Um, they had always built themselves as some sort of civic alive movement mm. with a with a with a with a organic Community structure that so does not necessarily have a hierarchy mm. um, of. Of, of organizational structure, which largely led me to believe this is a is a Marius Franzman uh, party. Yes, his, his his leaving of the ANC was mm. acrimonious. I always thought that he'd still have a very strong base on the mm. west coast, and that would be enough. I don't know how that's going to play out because my the visibility of the PMC, on my view, has been quite minimal actually. Mm. Mm. I think, but uh, I think they they actually quite active in the communities. Mm. You, I've I've checked some of their stuff quite useful, and 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 you know some of the boring ones. I actually found that ANC's posts are quite boring. That they says, let's do more together. Mm. It almost reminds me of the spring boxing that says stronger together, and a few years ago the DA also had something mm. together. Um, 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 not not a better life for all was in 1994, but this, let's do more together. Um, so I, I found that just so boring, mm. so 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 lame. I, I think if we allow the ANC to do less in uh, many aspects, there will be, be, be a sign <laughs> for growth. But there was an interesting uh, contribution to a listener mm. on 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 my show, uh. and it was early on in the in the in the campaign where he says, how about we make a rule? Let's make a rule that says the ANC cannot say anything about apartheid, uh -huh. but opposition parties can't say anything about the ANC because it means that they would have to campaign on the offering to South Africans on, and yeah. not based on, on the, the recent and not so recent yeah. past. I thought that yeah. was quite fascinating. Well, what, what, what do you think about the MK's... My Ibuye slogan. I think it's so, so yesterday. You know, I, I think, I, I, and I, and and then and then coupled with Gaita, the PA is just Gaten McKenzie for mm. president. To this photo and uh, Gaten for uh, president and that other slogan that they Mahambe or whatever. Um, <laughs> Mahambe, where they say go now, that <laughs> means go now. I, I think. No, no, not you do on the Bizani. That or is, Bizani. yeah. Um, um, I, I think that's a very Joburg, uh, Joburg saying. I don't saying. know if there's traction in Cape Town, but maybe viewers can can let us know. But uh, MK is is very interesting. I think they're going to be doing some uh, some damage to the ANC uh, in in KZN. Um, whether that will reflect nationally, we don't know yet, uh, because. Where the DA is growing, the DA is actually growing in KZN. Chris Papas is actually mm. doing some very actually interesting like work, guy, eh? work there. And so when some polls say that the, the the MK to win KZN, I doubt that very much because it has to come at the at at, at the yeah, risk yeah. of someone. I don't yeah. see that that coming necessarily from uh, ANC or Democratic Alliance. As we spoke earlier, um, the, the Patriotic Alliance is the unknown quantity in the Western Cape. They've won by-elections in rural parts of the province. They've not been tested with the two million registered voters in, okay, so, in so, Cape Okay, so let's get to crystal ball kind of stuff mm. because we're closer to when, when I need to say who I think, who, who I'm going to vote for. You know, the one thing is that's clear is the number of people attending a rally does not necessarily reflect how many votes you're going to get. I think that's uh, so. Let's talk about how you see how it's going to pan out nationally, and then um, and then let me see, let let's hear whether we at Edom and um, around what's what's uh, our crystal ball. When we say when, when we say, what does losing an election mean? Losing an election means you are not returned to government. I I think, and I've spoken to enough people in the ANC. To, to think that the ANC is comfortable 
They wouldn't like it, but the ANC is comfortable with dipping below 50 because they have enough support from smaller parties that they could cobble, cobble with, together with because they're, in, they're the incumbent government and that holds currency. So they will return as the governing party with, a, uh, with some sort of partnership. And here's the great thing. Um, you can call it whatever you like. You can call it the government of national unity. You can call it a coalition partners. You can call it a, a vote-sharing mechanism. Mm -hmm. ANC will return as government. Um, and, and here's why I think why many in the ANC actually wouldn't mind below 50%. You have Khalema Mutlanti, former president of this country and is a former ANC president telling the BBC hard talk it was after he, he left office as, as, as the country, as the Republic's president um, saying it's possibly a good thing that the ANC mm -hmm. could lose an election. It means that those who have been there to rent seek no longer have that opportunity and then they naturally they leave the party. Mavusa Msamang, um, who unfortunately I think has the biggest egg on, on his face, face because yeah. remember he resigned from the party and was asked to come back and he said, yes, I'll come back if there are serious changes. There were no changes, so, so, so he's left to rue that decision. Also have been on record numerous times saying that the ANC can still fulfill its historic mission from an opposition bench. So there's very much some within the ANC that says that's very comfortable, even dipping below 50%, but still governing, but it being quite tight. I don't think any political party in this election is going to come out feeling we did better than, so, 20, so, than, so than, than 2019. I think the ANC will, will dip below 50 yeah. somewhere. Uh, and I, uh, at the weekend, I spoke to some very smart people who look at numbers and not just look at numbers from polling data, but look at number for financial mm -hmm. institutions. It's also the markets, global markets have, a, have an interest in the South African election. And they're saying that it's the ANC between 42 and 47 percent. In terms okay. of the Democratic Alliance, uh, they're seeing the Democratic Alliance return somewhere between 17 and 20 uh, percent. There is somewhat of a ceiling that the Democratic Alliance has hit around the 22 percent mark, which unless there are deep reforms within the party of whether they're going to really attract a broad base of South African voter to reach and to breach a 25% mark. Yeah. Currently, it doesn't look like it. Okay, so let me tell you what I think is my crystal ball. I think the ANC, if a miracle happens, they would get just over 50%. They'll, then they'll run the country on their own. If they don't, and they significantly below, in the low 40s, then the ANC will do a deal with the EFF, and with MK party, um, but then it's clear Cyril Ramaphosa is not going to come as president or the deal will be after a period he's going to leave. But if the ANC is, as you say, just below, f say, 47, 48, and they need smaller parties, they'll do a deal with smaller parties, but not the EFF or MK, then Cyril will stay as president. And then the third thing, third option, if the ANC is also just below 50, 47, 48 or so on, then they'll do a deal with the IFP. Belen Kosis Labisa said at the weekend the IFP is ready to govern. It wouldn't be out of the ordinary. Yeah. Remember, KZN was the ruling government in 1994. Yeah. Uh, IFP and KZN. Uh, very regularly, uh. the ANC has included IFP members as ministers. Uh, mm. Mangusu Tupotelezi was Minister of Home Affairs from 94 to 90. Zimela and all of those Exactly. People. Joe Matthews, those people, all of them. And it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibilities for the IFP and the ANC to go into coalition. And you know, and you know the reason why? Is because of the Zulu question. So they will, they will deal with that thing that Zuma them is complaining about mm. the, the Zulu issue and all of that stuff. 
So they mm. ANC is 47, 48 or so on. I think they'll do a deal with the IFP. I think it's far more existential for Velenkos Islabisa, uh. who is currently uh, facing uh, leadership battles uh, uh. within um, the IFP. The IFP also has an RET faction, mm -hmm. uh, which he's also trying to, to quell. And with an entrance into a government with the access and the resources that government allows that that saves his skin for some for some time. So, but what does that mean to what has been written and said and opined about by the multi-party charter? If 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 we already have an IFP who's saying, oh, we, but we in could. But multi-party charter. I mean, let's say you know that multi-party charter thing has dissipated mm. a while ago, especially after when the DA started calling some of their supposed partners names. I think that thing has dissipated a while ago. I don't know whether you agree with me or not, but I think that is my to say in a piece of paper. Mm. And and they all have said it's a pre-election agreement. And and this is why I think 2024 is the the a primary to 1994 to 2029. To, to in, in, in that, I think a lot of political parties are testing out waters on how we have big tent, broad church, diversity in membership and votership, and we prepare for 2029. And, and I think that is going to be a test for many political parties on okay. how do we attract a diversity of voters. The Western Cape, I still see the, the uh, Democratic Alliance being the dominant party year, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't see them dipping below 50%. If they do, Freedom Front Plus is, well, we are there to rescue uh, the Democratic Alliance and we will, and there will still be, a, uh, Alan Windy will return yeah. as, uh, as as mayor. I, I think... As um, premier. As, as, as premier, my apologies. That's a little bit of a Freudian <laughs> slip there because it <laughs> Maybe also... Maybe Gordon, Jordan, Hill, Lewis would move up. It asks the question... Why was Musi Maimani removed? They say uh, that, well, he uh, hit a ceiling and mm. didn't see growth. What, what happens if John Stierna mm. doesn't, exactly. doesn't see growth? Do they remove him? Do they also call him a, a failed experiment? Uh. And if not John Stierna then who? Yeah. Okay, let, let, let's get back to the, to the Western Cape thing. I, I actually think no one is going to win. I don't think the DA is going to win 50%. I think... They go below 50%. There's a deal between the DA, the Freedom Front Plus, as you say, and I think maybe mm. Action SA. I think there's a deal there between those parties. And depending how big that fall is, if that fall is below 45, or is it, if it's to 45 or something like that, and uh, I don't know whether that is possible, then I see there is a deal between the smaller parties, um, PMC, PA, Al Jama, CC, uh, Cape Colored Congress, even MK Party, and the ANC. Mm. I see a deal like that if the DA goes below 45%. Can, can, my final word will be around. Um, the ANC in this city, city of mm. Cape Town and the Western Cape Province, in the last 30 years, the ANC has only governed for five of those 30 years here in the Western Cape. The ANC has been in opposition in the city of Cape Town since 2006. So 18 years as opposition mm. in the city of Cape Town, 15 years as opposition in the, in the Western Cape province. province. The only thing I believe the ANC does worse than govern is being in opposition. No, because they know where. They're ANC not in opposition even. They don't know in, what it is to be in opposition. And it has not been a learning curve. It could have been a great learning curve for um, other provinces, other metros, um, that this is how we have managed to deal mm. with life in opposition benches. And, of course, they are, they, are, they are green shoots for the ANC, particularly with a figure like Khalid Saeed, who's coming mm. up and showing himself as a, as a good leader. But I don't see any opposition from the ANC. My final parting shot is is on the ANC in opposition. I'm incredibly confident and hopeful for this country. Uh, and the question, the, 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 
the topic on non elections is not who wins an election. The real test for a democracy is if there is a peaceful transition of power mm. from one party or individual to another. We've done so in this country before. I think we'll do it again. And we'll do it again. We've had city of Cape Town, Joburg, um, uh, Etiquini, uh, Nelson Mandela, by all being governed by the opposition. The seat of our economy in Johannesburg. Uh, we've had provinces like KZN governed by the IFP. I don't think South Africans need to be worried about if the voters decide the ANC should not be in government. I have confidence that we've already passed the test in what democracy is, and that is the transfer what, of power. What, what do you think is going to happen in KZN and Gauteng? I, I, think the, I think the ANC win all the other provinces, mm. uh, maybe with lower majorities in, in, in Northern Cape, Free State and Pumalanga, but Gauteng and KZN. So we've already spoken about the possibility of ANC IFP, IFP nationally, nationally, and that could be the sweetener for the IFP, that they could be party yeah. in government there. The ANC is struggling against uh, um, against the EFF, and there will probably yeah, be a, 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 um, a coalition in uh, Gauteng uh, with e ANC and EFF. There is worry about Mpumalanga as well with the impact of MK. of MK. But Northwest Limpopo or PSF. What's going to be interesting about this election is, is with regard to the to the to the patriotic alliance, we'll start seeing the smaller municipalities in the Northern Cape. Mm -hmm. reporting first municipalities around uh, uh, Kuruman and, and, and they will start coming out first. So we could see, um, come Thursday morning, we could see for a very short time the Patriotic Alliance in, in the, in the leading, Northern Cape. leading in the Northern Cape and that then skews uh, the national picture just momentarily yeah. until some of the larger areas start coming in. Okay, let's, let, let, let's talk a bit about who... who um, I don't know whether you would want to venture, but who I suggest that people must consider voting for, and this is not my final uh, um, selection yet. Um, you know, the, the one thing is, um, I think that people is looking for someone new. People is looking for an alternative, with a with a, um, and they're looking for new blood with a combination of experience and that's what I'm looking for experience and civil society activism um, and I think people is looking to my sense is who I think people should vote for is vote for an alternative to the two big brothers so I put it on the table an alternative to the ANC nationally and an alternative to the DA in the Western Cape because the DA is not good for the poor and the middle class in this province um, so I don't know if you want to comment. Uh, I'll, I'll if you comment want to comment about about that, I'll comment in this way that Mbazima Shaloa tweeted something earlier today in that it um, it makes no sense in shouting and hurling insults at people who um, even after thirty years continue to vote in the patterns that they mm. choose to do so. We all vote rationally, and we all vote irrationally, irrationally. as you did. As as I did, mm. um, there were some decisions that were easy to make. Um, I still haven't had a shower since I have voted at 12 o'clock this morning mm. or this afternoon. So I'll probably be going to have to have a, a, a scrub down to live to live with how I voted Ach, because no, uh, because it's not you, so bad. You, you, but yeah, it's, it's not so bad because here's, here's the thing: voting is not a marriage. Yes. It's a decision that we collectively make every five years. We all, whether you voted yes, for a party, did not vote it. for a party, you can equally criticize a party if they do not uh. deliver. If you voted for a party, did not vote, if they have performed well, well, we can ask whether we should clap hands for fish for the ability uh, to mm. swim. Uh, but that is, um, we're all in this together. Yeah. And that we've all collectively, yeah. uh, uh, the decision on who governs this country is based on the aggregate of all of our, yeah, yeah. of our votes. I will sleep fine tonight. I so, will, so, I will yeah, scrub so, those. So it's not a, so, I mean, as I would, I would tell people is don't believe that your vote don't count. Mm -hmm. Even if you spoil your ballot, you, you made a statement. Doesn't, uh, that doesn't help. 
No, no, it helps. Spoiling your balance isn't no, counted. No, spoiled your balance. The, 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 the only Whether it's counted or not, at least you, you, <laughs> you exercised. Okay. You okay. exercised, you applied your mind, mm. and you said... None of the above. None of the above, right? Mm. You didn't just stay away. So, so saying that, would you have the courage to indicate... Um, would you think people mm. uh, should? You wouldn't. I. I, 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 I wouldn't. You have far more freedom. To, okay. I. I. Okay. I, 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 I work okay. and I live in a realm. Yeah. Where uh, you can't. Where I. Where I'm yeah, yeah. professionally yeah, bound yeah, I, to, I, I to keep that. my peace. So you know, I've I've interviewed a number of them, and I've read almost through all of the manifestos. I've watched some of them on when they were interviewed on TV, the debates and all, all of the parties. So nationally, these are the two mm. that I think that makes interesting offerings and they've got interesting combinations of people who are part of their teams. The one is Rise and Zanzi. The other one is Action SA. Mm. Those are the two that I think that's standing out for me in this. this Can um, I ask you a quick question? Yes. Are, are there political parties that you would absolutely not, not vote, vote for, but you appreciate the presence and the inclusion uh, of these people within the broader scheme of our provincial and national politics? Yes, no, obviously. I, I mean, at this stage, I won't vote for the ANC. Mm. I definitely won't vote for the DA. Um, I won't vote for the EFF. I won't vote for the Freedom Front Plus in spite of people saying how wise and how clever their leaders are. I think they um, they are wise and clever. They know how to get people on their side. So those ones I definitely won't, won't vote for. Definitely. But there are people within those parties that you yeah, no, appreciate. No, 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 I, I, and I think this is where we sometimes... Um, because we, we watch the theatrics of the yeah. National Assembly and people yeah. shouting, but they are incredibly hardworking MPs and whether they within, return or not. Within, within those all, parties, yes. Parks Tau was a very yeah, accomplished yeah. mayor of, of Johannesburg for the ANC. David yeah. Mosondo is possibly a future yeah. um, uh, finance, finance minister. minister. Siviwe uh, Kwahube, the, the chief, chief whip of, of the, the Democratic DH. Alliance. She's solid. Absolutely solid. I look at someone like Alf Lees, who is in Standing Committee of Public Accounts for the Democratic Alliance. I've told Peter Grunewald I would never vote for the Freedom Front Plus, but I think that the Freedom oh, Front Plus... Oh, at least they, you said you saw two, we didn't <laughs> So that's for one down out of 52. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, but I've really... I, no, and these are, these are, these are, these are other conversations that yeah. I've... I've uh, there's nothing on the, on, on the Freedom Front Plus's um, uh, policy documents that that speak to me, but yeah. I appreciate the presence of a Corne Mulder yeah. within yeah, committee, no, they, for example. And, and they add value. Mm. So, so let's get to the second ballot, which is a regional mm. to, to, uh, to the, the 200 seats to go to the National Assembly. This is the one with independent candidates. With the independents. And there I definitely going for independence. I think people should consider independence. We've been arguing a long while. I think they've made it difficult for independence. I see unnecessarily so, I think. Um, I think there are two people. Two people that uh, I think people should consider. One is obviously Zaki Ahmad, I think. Um, he's got a huge track record. We know what he's... And he's, he speaks his mind. He's a hard worker. Mm -hmm. He's passionate, all of that. Uh, and then the other one is Anelem Da. The Gauteng uh, Ballot. Uh, that, uh, that young lady. Mm. Uh, um, a former COPE Youth League for, member. Op, and she was a member of parliament, mm. all of that. So I would, uh, those two people mm. on, the, on the ballot. My issue with, with Zaki's campaign is that he has said he only wants one term yeah. as, as, as MP. What's wrong with that? Um... <sighs> I, I don't think that... No, the man is 62. The man is... The Zaki man is 62? Yeah, he's 60 odd, yeah. Yeah, Zaki is six, 61, 62. I, I, and I, and I, I think he's correct. And I, I think I've told him this, that I think that um, the the turning around the ship of South Africa is not going to take one term. No, 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 but that's not the take point. five years. He will put all of his effort and energy mm. in to do something. Uh, 
So no, I, no, you mm. can't mark. I hope you didn't vote, not vote for him because of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I think he would. Mm. I think he would. He would go and rattle the cages. Oh, no, he he's been an absolute the right benefit. Questions. The he Unite would. Behind campaign has, yeah, yeah. has already materially seen yeah, yeah. the Puyo Peters already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all the range of people uh, out. Exactly, and, and the continued litigation against so, uh, so uh, the dynamic, Pranza. Those two, they got good track records. They will ask tough questions. They will, um, and they're both actually energetic, mm. and they, they're not going to fall asleep. In Parliament, mm -hmm. I think. But you just said the man is 62 now. No, but he's, he's uh, energetic. I also <laughs> said he's energetic. <laughs> Then provincially, Western Cape. Uh -huh. These are the ones that I think that people should consider. If you live in a Western Cape, for your provincial ballot, mm. go to the provincial parliament. Um, I think Rai Zanzi, I think that Akolile, he's, a, that he's solid. He comes from a civil society background and... Um, Solid individual, grounded, uh, clever. Um, <clears throat> they got a good team. Action is a uh, Angela Sobi. Um, she would make a, a useful contribution there if she could go in. Um, CCC. Mm. Uh, <laughs> only thing is that um, what are they offering besides saying I'm for the colored child? Um, but with the necessary guidance, as I said, they would be, um, and then people's movement for change. Um, I think they've got, it's break with the past, but also they bring, they, they got personalities in there. I mean, Franzman, um, 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 and so on, and, and Plato and all of those people. Then, um, so actually, I would like all four mm. of those leaders or those parties to be in the provincial parliament, including uh, Dr. Harun, in spite of their position around women and, um, and, and, and all of that. So they've got all, all of them got something unique to offer. So I would say people should consider those ones for the Western Cape. Do you think it, it was a mistake for the ANC not to put forward a direct pre premier candidate? Um, and and if it was a mistake, who should that premier candidate have been? Nah, I got, I can't advise the ANC. <laughs> I can't advise the ANC. I um, so 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 before I before I actually say who I'm going to vote mm. for, um, just post election reflections, man. I think ultimately, I think what I would have liked us to have had is to nationally have a government of national unity. I think South Africa needs that. Um, and obviously we must have th certain thresholds, mm. because otherwise it's not going to. I think people don't like the thing of thresholds, but I think you need to have thresholds, to have, because they are good people in, in, all of these in some of these parties. So I think we needed to have a government of national unity, And I think provincially we should have governments of provincial unity even if there is an outright winner in a particular province. And if there's a safe example the ANC get, let's use a province like Limpopo. ANC gets 65%, right? They win it outright. But the DA maybe gets 5%. Uh, the... Um, If, if gets another five or so on, then I think they should be part of that government mm. for the period. And the reason for, for that, because I think South Africa, we need to do two things as a country after the elections. I think we need to have two kind of codesas. The one codesa to try and get everyone, all everyone on the same page of what kind of country we need to have, South Africa we need to have, and what should we do to make sure that our public representatives are more accountable and our people have a better say over who rule them. Then the second thing is, I think, an economic codesa that Bantu Alamisa, I think Franz Madem has been talking about for a while as well, where we deal with the whole question around 
what do we need to do to turn our economy mm. around in order to deal with this vexing unemployment problem and how can we assist SSMEs? So that's the reason why I think we need to have mm. government of national unity and government of provincial unities with thresholds. What's your views about that? Um, there's already been legislation that's been, um, well, policy papers that's been tabled for how Local metros government. and, and, and municipalities could be run. And that brings into consideration uh, thresholds and, and limits on how you can call for for removals of mayors and speakers, but also a threshold of uh, parties with l fewer mm. than 10% of yeah. the vote to actually be part of coalition uh, uh, agreements. It takes away um, the voices of communities and constituencies that have very niche interests. How would it take it away? It would take away because I... I, I I'm not we, talking we, local government, eh? We're talking about national government and provincial government. So in... It's a different dynamic. So in 2014, a party called the African Independent Congress, they're a... Currently, I think, still a two-seat party in the National mm. Assembly. They got voted into Parliament. Some people would argue it's because that the colours were very similar yeah, to the yeah. ANC and also voters yeah. got confused, confused with the AIC versus yeah. the ANC. But they claim they got in because they managed to galvanise a the community of Matatiel in mm. the Eastern Cape. Matati L wanted to be incorporated into KZN. The demarcation board said that you were in the Eastern Cape. And they galvanized and they created a political campaign so that if we get to parliament, we are we can change our lot. And I appreciated that that particular campaign. You could also argue that religious Religion-based parties are niche constituents. ACDP, Aljamaa, those are they, they. They speak for a niche constituency, no, but I don't and they have and they have a right to be represented. But listen, that's a, I'm not. They must be. In, they'll be in parliament. I'm but not. So I'm they not need saying, to meet a threshold to be engaged in. No, 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 no. They need when they, when a government mm. of national. Then I talk about that's in the executive. Mm. So a government of national unity is. These are the people that make up the executive. Like the IFP and the NP was pulled into the executive in 1994. Um, so there were lots of other parties part of, of parliament, but that doesn't mean to say, if I talk about the government of national unity and government of provincial unity, I'm talking about at executive level. They have been, but we can have that debate. Yeah, look, uh, I think that we pay very little attention to how much involvement of opposition party leaders that have been cabinet members or deputy ministers in yeah. ANC led governments, whether it be from the IFP, whether it be from Azapo, um, uh, Peter Mulder, who was the former mm. leader of the Freedom Front, he was a deputy minister of, of, of agriculture. Uh, Patricia Dills, the leader of Good, she's the minister of. Of uh, um, of tourism, uh, in terms of ambassadorships, you've had Tony Leon who was ambassador to Argentina. Um, uh, Douglas Ma Martha Orcus was uh, Douglas Gibson was the mm. ambassador to Thailand. Sandra Buerta also, after mm. being a deputy speaker in in Parliament, around about nineteen ninety nine, she I think she was mm. the the ambassador to uh, to I think it was Austria. Mm. So there has been political party uh, engagement. Uh, opposition party engagement even within mm. national government before yeah. I don't see why we can't continue that That's yeah it. so so now we're getting to who I will Ron's vote for choice yeah let's say you want to tell us who, who you voted for no uh, I clear, don't clear, clearly <laughs> didn't vote for the Freedom Front Plus <laughs> we know you didn't vote for them <laughs> you didn't vote so you know I I actually think that we that we need to um the one thing I want to say that we need to reset our electoral system. If we had to vote directly for a president mm. or a premier, then clearly I would have voted differently. Mm. I think we, we need to think about that some more because you, you made a point earlier on about personality polity. I mean, the Western Cape needs a needed personality and I think personality politics is big in this country. And we need to have that discussion mm. whether we shouldn't vote directly for a president or a premier and don't just leave it to a party. Um, 
that's another thing. You know, up till 2009, I voted since 1994, I voted ANC all the way. 2014, that was, I think that was about when we started talking about SA First Forum and we were upset about state capture, we were observing it. Ah, after 2009, 2010, did, did you not, 2011. Did you not move COPE in 2009? No, no, I never moved to COPE. Mm. I voted ANC. I, I thought, uh, uh, yeah, I thought they were just another faction within mm. the ANC. So I, I voted ANC up to 2009. 2014, nationally, I spoiled my ballot. Nationally, I was, man... Up till in that voting thing, I was unsure. I spoiled my ballot. But provincially, I thought the ANC could do it in the opposition. Um, I gave them my vote in the Western Cape. We were very disappointed in them, actually. 2019, nationally, ooh, there was really no one on the horizon. No one. But there was this guy, what's his name? Kenton Pillay, I think he was he was uh, e, the was ETV the, or something. He was the capitalist, the capitalist, the capitalist party, party, the, 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 the purple cow. The, the purple cow. Yes. And I he actually had some interesting policy <laughs> offerings, but he went no so I voted for him. <laughs> you know, I knew it was gonna go I voted mm. for him. And provincially, believe it or not. Believe it or not, I voted for the Red Berets because I thought they will come and shake up things in the, in the provincial uh, legislature. 2024, my, I'm very clear, I think we need to vote for an alternative. Um, people that can make good contributions. Um, will keep people on their toes. They might not necessarily, um, doesn't matter to me whether they're going to be the governing party or not, but as long as they're not afraid to speak up mm. and they can make contributions at national government level because if you do your stuff properly in the committees and your speaking time, it, you can make an impact. So, and then I look at the manifestos, and remember we had the People's Convention, mm. so I always look at these things through the lens of the People's Convention because that manifesto was generally, except a lot of people actually bought into that. Um, and sometimes I wonder whether I shouldn't have stood as an independent, mm. <laughs> but nah, I've, I'm, I'm done with that. So... So nationally, in spite of the latest revelations about another source of funding um, um, I, and, and due to their manifesto, mm. I think, and as I said, their links to a solid think tank, the Rivonia Circle, they, they link to the Rivonia Circle. Um, they got an energetic group of, of leaders, I think, and they got lots of people from civil society organizations. They actually want to grow activism beyond the elections. Um, they've got some very good academics advising them. I know some of those people. And they've got solid activists with solid track records. My vote is going to go nationally to Rise and Zanzi. That's one the regional to national, um, I'm not sure whether I can vote for her. Uh, if I can't vote for her, then I'll have to vote for the other guy. Then I'm going to vote for independent. Because I, I firmly believe independents can make a country, especially if they are good. And I think this woman is excellent. She's young, she's energetic. Uh, she won't fall asleep in parliament, as I said. She will be independent-minded. She has been independent-minded. She's, she's fearless and she will make unique contributions. And as you know, mm. she was in parliament before. Um, she's a youth leader and she's a gender mm. activist. 
So I'll vote for Anel Mda. Yeah. She, she's, I, 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 she's I've, I've checked the ballot paper because I voted uh, already, so we only have one independent. So it would be Zaki. So it would be Zaki, Zaki as an independent candidate. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, obviously people mm. from the rest of the country, especially my friends in Gauteng, mm. I encourage you to vote for Anel Mda uh, on your regional to national ballot. I think she's going to make an excellent uh, uh, contribution. So regional to national is going to be Zaki Ahmed. I'm I'm going to uh, vote. We work together um, with Unite Behind and um, the People's Budget Process and all of that stuff. I didn't work with him with when he was at um, uh, his H H W H stuff. Campaign. Yeah, with with the TAC, um, but he'll make a solid contribution. And the fact that he actually said he's for one term, mm. I think he's great. So he will use all of his energy uh, and he'll be receptive to stuff that, that makes sense. Western Cape, third ballot. Um, I think it's a combination of experience. The fact that uh, he's been in national government, been provincial government, um, he actually don't need this according to the interactions that I had with him. He's one to put the tan, tani sunnies in the center mm -hmm. and uh, empower the young people and all of that stuff. Um, I like his idea about the economic Odessa and the need to reset our politics. So in spite of, and in spite of all of the other stuff around, floating around, and I've asked all of those questions from him. Um, there's some solid people that I'm going to vote mm. PMC, uh, uh, People's what's People's Movement for Change. Um, so that's going to be my vote. It sounds like you have uh, been quite considered in how you've gone through this yeah. process, and I hope more South Africans are like that. And as I said, you make irrational and you make irrational mm. decisions. You make some decisions over with emotion and you make mm. some decisions with consciousness and they can overlap. Um, whatever decision you and I and the other 28 million, million registered people. South Africans um, as many as possible. We just should just remember we're not married to political parties, mm. I see your Arsenal supporter there. I've been a Manchester United supporter so since I was I was in, I was eleven years old. Okay, so you guys, are you happy? I'm very happy over the, the weekend. <laughs> but uh, why is it um, that we treat many of us? We treat our political parties or who we vote for as these lifelong affiliations, like mm. like a football club that you support. And 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 we think they are gods. They are not gods. Mm. We need to hold them accountable. Mm. So, Lester, before I thank you, I just let me just deal with our feel-good moment. Oh, yes, to all the listeners that, uh, that watch us, thanks for joining us. We uh, hope you found this useful. Um, and I might have influenced one or two of you to actually go and vote. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. Um, <clears throat> 2024 is not our 1994, not by far, but the, the choices that you make could make a huge impact in how we become a better country and a better province for all of our people to live in dignity, uh, with dignity. Um, hopefully the unemployment rate would be less and people can... Uh, feel safer in their communities. Um, so yeah, let me, before I, oh yes, and you can watch this on the Facebook Live page of Cape Conscious Media. It would be uploaded onto the YouTube channels of Rod's Views and Cape Conscious Media. And um, from next week onwards, we'll be talking around a whole range of other topics. Um, I'll keep you informed. So yeah, can we do, we're doing our feel good moment. So obviously Leicester is feeling good because Manchester United against the odds won the trophy. Uh, being an Arsenal supporter Leicester, 
imagine you guys had beaten them man city yesterday and imagine um we had to win this one of our games that uh-huh. we should have won then man city would have had no trophy this year <laughs> hey i'd rather have a fellow mank than some 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 yeah, north yeah, yeah. londoner uh, <laughs> being happy so i'm yeah, glad yeah. i'm glad it's still in manchester yeah. so people yes yeah, so you know i'm a formula 1 i love sport mm. so formula 1 is my thing and um i love lewis hamilton is leaving mercedes benz this year he's going to ferrari next year and lo and behold what happens uh, formula 1 is in monaco and uh, charles leclerc wins uh, formula 1 in monaco mm. and he drives a ferrari and um, it was <laughs> interesting to see prince albert crying and he had his wife a uh, xr a uh, south african charlene wolstock who used to be a swimmer uh she was a good swimmer actually he was his wife so they were there so that's our feel good moment for the for the week and lester thanks for it was very enjoyable um you sitting that side of the table but you managed to find yourself to be on this side of the table as well but um thanks for um your perceptive um ness and all the best they keep on being strong at cape talk you make us proud uh you make our community proud um the fact that we are able to hold our own all over and um thanks for voting three ways <laughs> <laughs> telling people that they can vote three ways and i think that's a, i'm also voting three ways i mean that's a way that's a way to go because we are not beholden mm. as you say we are not we should not be beholden to political parties mm. or leaders in political parties they've got feet of clay mm. they human beings like all of us and we need to call them out um my fervent wish is after the elections that all of them remain as accessible as they have been now during this election period where people talk to them and they tell no talk to my PA or to my secretary or so on um South Africa would be so much a better place if they are so much more accessible they listen to our people more and they don't just think they are little gods and they know everything yeah. uh, their work starts starts now after yeah. the, the the process that will probably have an election results announcement on Sunday mm-hmm. and then there's a ticking clock of 2 weeks for a government to be formed possibly with a coalition mm. sworn in on the 18th of June as MPs and later that afternoon we'll have a president being elected mm. by the 400 members of the national assembly that's when the work starts Yes. So um yeah, it's going to be interesting. Are we Thank you people. That's Rod's views for the evening. Salute. Um let's just save driving. Um and what you getting up at 3 o'clock tomorrow morning? That's right. <laughs> so uh, who do I invoice? But thanks so much to uh to everyone. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. fan of of Cape Conscious Media. All the shows I watch it on uh-huh. YouTube, on the social media channels. It was a privilege being asked to be here. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, man. Okay. So warm about a thing But every little bit On a feel all right Singing don't worry About a thing This morning, smile with the rising sun, breathe.